bowling program that you're about to see is based on actual real-life events that may prove too damning for politically correct audiences. If you're going to be offended by any of what you'll see shortly, then WHAT THE HELL ARE YOU DOING ON MY CHANNEL?! Nonetheless, the following is purely for educational, informational, and comedic purposes only. In other words, don't be a stupid shillery, okay? Be a trumpeter. <laughs> I don't know if you guys care to realize this or not, but today's episode of Savage Level Omega Null is apparently going to be a very somber one because it so often happens that the day after tomorrow is the 14th anniversary of my father's passing as of this recording. So, you look for in the bitter summer time! Ah! Okay. Bottom line, there is a very, very intriguing literary piece by this Chinese deviant artist named Chasing Clocks called Symphony of the Lost, composed on December the 15th, 2013, finished around 9 o'clock at night, my time zone. It is a philosophical short story with a unique perspective that, quite frankly, I would have never imagined possible. So, we're just going to get to that. But before I do that, I want to just, I want to get a couple of memes out of there, just, just, just for the hell of it, because, because I can. Anyway... The hell was that? My TV just just came up with the Deke logo. Oh, right, cause cause innuendo reference. Okay. Not that anybody's gonna care, but whatevs. Let's get to it. Symphony of the Lost by the Chinese deviant artist Chasing Clocks. A literary tone poem, so to speak. Well, it's not as much a tone poem as it is just a short story, but you get what I'm saying. Somehow, I find myself in an old, abandoned symphony hall. Therein can be found the decaying orchestra and the archaic conductor preparing for a grand finale. According to the billing, they are performing something called Symphony of the Lost. I find myself directed to a front row seat by a skeletal usher. Perhaps he wants a tip. I attempt to hand him whatever change be in my pocket, but he pushes me into the seat before I can find any. His jaw clacks together before a guttural voice spews out. The symphony will begin momentarily. Please remain in your seat for the duration of the show. Oddly enough, I have enough sense to realize that the skeleton has no vocal cords. How can he speak? Something tells me that the rules of this place are not as they should be. As I swivel my head around, I see several more skeletal ushers escorting other half-dead creatures to their seats. They appeared to have all been human at one time, and then again now they are not more but Decaying flesh stretched across weary, tired bones. Many of them sport old-fashioned aiming wear, exotic dresses, and stuffy suits. Their manner is unlike anything that I have ever seen. Their behavior is over the top and extremely snobby. Feeling slightly overwhelmed, I turn back around to peruse the orchestra. Each musician in each instrument looks dry and dusty, and very dusty too, I should say. Both skeletons in their own way. Brass section looks as if it is ready to collapse under the weight of some of these larger instruments. 
The wood ones appear to be one step shy of their final resting place. Just how grand can this grand finale be? The lights fading already dim, and an almost death-like hush spreads over the crowd. There in the middle of the stage stands the okay conductor, his eyeless sockets seemingly overlooking the audience. When the room is in complete silence, he bows an illustrious bow, but I wonder if his spine is going to rip through his tattered jacket. Good evening. Tonight we shall perform the grand symphony of the lost, composed by the more famous composer to come after our time. Faint laughter echoes throughout the room. What does he mean by after our time? After a brief moment of jaw working, he continues. This shall be a final performance with me as the conductor, the composer of this masterpiece. Shall be taking my place so that I may enter into my final rest. A murmur of displeasure walls around the room at this news. To which he further equips, Please try to enjoy yourselves. He bows once again and again. I wait for his protruding spine to find its way through the thinning fabric. After he straightens up, he spins around in an amazingly agile manner to raise his hands and signal the orchestra in preparing themselves for their final journey with him. Suddenly, the room fills with a euphony of sounds, all of them mixing together with such passion I can scarce believe it. I'm enraptured. My soul feels as if it is ready to burst from within me. It wants to escape to become one of the music. As the music lifts, I feel enshrouded by warmth. Love and warmth. We, all of us in this room, are soaring ever higher. I feel weightless, like nothing's holding me down. But just as it reaches the peak of happiness, however, it crashes back down. So low I begin to cry uncontrollably. The unfairness of it all burns me, and I'm crushed there in my seat. My breath comes in short gasps between the flows of my tears. I'm encumbered by guilt, hatred, loathing, and unspeakable wickedness. I try to catch a glimpse of the people that have been in the room with me, but I can't see anything. No longer can I see the orchestra and their worn instruments. No longer can I see their conductor waving furiously. I'm alone with this terrible monster. I'm falling into the music. I must get free! Lower and lower, the music takes me. Each note penetrates my very being, causing me to scream out. My face is soaking wet with perspiration and tears. My tears have become as into a river with me sinking into it. Where is the earlier joy that filled and lifted my soul to an unknown happiness? Just as I think that I will be forever buried in this sort of music, it begins to fade. Now it is quiet. I can barely hear it. It brings me neither unknown happiness nor heartbreaking sorrow. It brings me nothing. I can feel nothing. Continuously, it plays in the background, and I find myself trying to draw closer to it. I would rather have the sorrow than the emptiness that it brings me now. But wait. I can feel the music building up. An urgency can be felt in the music. Something's almost gone. Something is dying. My eyes begin to dim, and my heart slows down. I am dying. I am letting... 
the music take me away, away to a place where these extreme feelings of happiness and sorrow can't and won't be felt. Slowly I begin to slip away from my mortal body. I look down and see myself sitting in that chair, still as the dead. That's when I realize that I am the composer. This symphony is the symphony of my own life. All the joy and pain weave together to make for an elaborate composition. I have been writing this since the day I entered this world, and now as I exit, I am finally finishing it. I have been listening to my life all the way up to the end, the end in which I slip away. The end is when I finally get to escape all the suffering that occurs right before death. As I am piecing this together, as I am floating away from my body, I can hear the music again. It's getting louder and the intensity is growing. My emotions are not aroused for I am dead. Nothing moves me. Nothing I can feel. My body sits there lifeless, but permanently engaged by the music, the symphony of my life. Now I am lost forever to the mortal world, but I sit and stand on the stage again and again, conducting the symphonies of other lost ones, others past the mortal world. Someday, I too shall be allowed to enter into my final rest, but only when the right composer comes along. This only has 67 views in the five years since it was submitted. Why? Oh, oh wait, I know why! Because, because Roman Reigns! Roman Reigns! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have one suggestion for you if you're in the stock market. Follow the two words that two shady block businessmen gave you some 15 years ago, but you wouldn't take back then because the stocks crashed. Well, now you're going to have to take it because guess what? The stocks are tanking and that means it's time to... Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! That is right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to bail out. The stocks some three weeks ago were 26,000, now they are merely 21,000. So please, if you're in the stock market, get out of there. For your family, for me, for you. Because your brain is telling you to, and your mind is telling you to, and your heart and body and soul are telling you to. Listen! It's time to bail out. Bail out now while you can before it is too late. And if you don't do that and it becomes too late, you'll only have yourself to blame. You have been warned. And you know who you can thank for that? You can thank your jackass, democrat, demonic rat bastards that put politics over people. Yes, that is right. They caused the government to partially shut down three days ago as of this recording, all because they wouldn't include funding for a wall. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Your Democratic Party would rather an illegal immigrant than to serve you and work for you. This is why we have a fourth branch of government that nobody ever talks about. Of course, it's we the people. Because we are trusted by the same people to learn this stuff. Right? 
What a bunch of jock asses they are. They think they're God, but they're actually Satan in disguise. How do you like them apples? Andy, you're a first class cunt. I told you not to send that shit! And praise the Lord, Harriet Tubman's going to be on the 2020 $20 bill starting in about a year or so. Yay! So for whatever reason, that not isn't even happening yet. Damn you, Jacqueline! Uh, I'm sorry, I meant to say Steve Mnuchin. Yeah, man, good job on the correction, uh, man. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Oh, shut up. The point I'm trying to make is very simple, and that point is as crystal clear as a character off of Rebecca Sugar's created show, Steven Universe. And that point is, and I quote, NEVER VOTE DEMOCRAT! EVER! HE NEVER WORKS! That is all. Kevin, you take it from here. Okay, I will. <laughs> ah! You're a fucking some very troubling news coming out of Chicago, Illinois, courtesy of its jackass mayor, Rahm Emanuel. Chicago will always be a sanctuary city. You are safe in Chicago, according to Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel on November the 14th, 2016. Meanwhile, over Christmas weekend, in that very same Illinois city, 41 were shot, 11 of them killed. Let that sink in there, motherfuckers. Let that sink in. Chicago has always been the shithole city there. <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave it out there on the table, okay? The people of Chicago deserve everything that they are getting right now and have gotten in the last 90 years. They elected an Islamic statesman committing jihad on a regular basis and they knew that he was full of crap. They knew that he was full of crap, but they elected him anyway because they wanted a black man! They wanted a black man! Except this wasn't a black man. This was an illegal immigrant from Kenya. The same illegal immigrant from Kenya who stole the Oval Office from the people for eight years. You think that they would learn their lesson, right? They did not learn their lesson. No, sir. Because what do they do? They elect an even worse jihad committing Islamic statesman who sucks Quran cock in the form of Ram Emanuel. And they've been getting screwed up the butt ever since. I'm telling you people. The people of Chicago deserve everything that they're getting, and they don't deserve any better either. Not unless they get their heads out of their rears and actually do something to change the absolute mess that they elected into their gubernatorial positions to either represent their city or their state in the Senate. Thank God we have a Republican-led Senate now. That's all I can say. In the meantime, they had their turn to make Chicago great again, and they failed miserably like they have been for the last 90 years. By the way, Rahm Emanuel is the 11th consecutive Democratic mayor of that city. Holy crap! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you all that California deserves to burn from a crisp because they failed Kate Steinle and now in death she is getting her revenge 
because the entire bastard state is burning to a crisp. Support! Scully Talk! Get the notification after you subscribe, because obviously you can't get the notification after you subscribe, because why the hell would you do that before you subscribe? Anyway, the Redditor who posted this remark, who isn't me, by the way, it's obviously someone who voted Donald John Trump, other than myself, I didn't make this comment exactly as it was worded, but I know someone who did, and on December the 8th, 2017, that is precisely what that person at 9.35 in the morning said. He said, and I quote, I'd like to think of the California wildfires as Kate Steinle getting her revenge. California deserves to burn down after that bullshit. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And you know what, sir or madam? For writing that, you not only deserve a Presidential Medal of Freedom, you deserve a trophy. And not a participation trophy, no, an actual one. For having the nuts to speak the God's honest truth. Because you, my friend, tell it like it is. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. I say let California burn completely from city limit to city limits. Then, when there is nothing left, let all the BLM members have it. But they have to pay for all the lumber and all building materials to rebuild that state. Then President Trump can build a wall around that border as well. Obviously, the state of entire California deserves to burn, and rightfully so. They failed Kate Steinle. They failed every Republican that tried to go up against Jerry Brown and got screwed up the butt. And now, everybody in California is paying for it, because they voted for a man who is synonymous with a mouse that talks shit. You're welcome. Dungeon Oh, here we go, man. Yeah! That's what we're talking about, man. All right. Yeah. Hey, it's Jimmy from Zipa. Hey, you want something good this, this, um, this, I screwed that up. Anyway, anyway, let's just, okay. If ever you needed an honest sign to let you know what you're getting yourself into, guess what? You came to the right place at the right time. Cause I'm gonna tell you like it is. According to PatriotRetort.com WELCOME TO THE NOT SO GREAT STATE OF NEW YORK! FOR LIFE, THROUGH SECOND AMENDMENT, PAY YOUR TAXES THEN GET THE HELL OUT! WE DON'T VALUE YOU, BUT WE DO VALUE YOUR MONEY! NEW YORK, BECAUSE IT'S A SHITHOLE that simply refuses to die. Yes. I just said it. You know, there are so many people in New York who are corrupt to the core, but then there are people who actually know how it is and tell it like it is, and are actually doing something to make their state great again. You know, my friend, Jerry D, you know, JD from New York 206, JD from NY 206, he lives there in New York, so he knows how much of a shithole it is. He never talks about it in his videos, but he knows. And you know what, the fact that he stayed in that, in that state so long, honestly, I commend the guy. I do. He's one of the few people over there that I've actually come to respect. And not only that, someone I've come to admire from that state, including Donald John Trump Sr. and his family, and that's pretty much it. Almost everyone else there in New York, minus, I would say, Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani is a great man, a New Yorker at heart, 
but a man who puts politics last and people first. That guy tells it like it is. But it's people like that that are somehow keeping New York alive. Without those people, New York would essentially be, I don't know, North Korea 2.0? Except Kim Jong-un isn't ruling that state. You know who's ruling that state? That goddamn politician Andrew Cuomo! And I'm just, I'm just channeling my inner Vince Russo here. Not that it means anything, but to hell with it, right? Because you just need to point that stuff out every now and then, right? And do I have to point that out? Because it's the God's honest truth. And if ever you need to figure out why Arizona is the worst state for teachers, here's why. Arizona ranked 51st in the U.S. for teachers. Yes, 51st. A new study from WalletHub shows Arizona is not a great state for teachers. In fact, it's the worst. Why? The study looked at several factors, including student ratio between student-teacher ratio, teacher turnover, and public school spending per student. Needless to say, Arizona did not have great scores in these categories. Any of them. So they're a shit state. They don't educate their people. They don't legislate laws. They don't elect people who won't put politics over you. And they're an overall shithole. There is literally nothing in that state worth living for. If you're in Arizona and you have a Jeff Flake or a John McCain representing you, get the hell out of there and go to a less shittier state like, I don't know, Pennsylvania, Virginia. I heard North Carolina is great this time of year. But you people already know that. I mean, I mean just look at that, man. Look at that! New York is biased! But I'm fine! Just look at it! <laughs> Arizona is dead last! Yeah! It's just fucking shit! That's why they call it a tombstone. There's a city in Arizona called that, believe it or not. Tombstone, Arizona. You know why it's called Tombstone? Because that's the cemetery that houses John McCain. Yeah, you people didn't know that, did you? Anyway, Arizona is ranked last in the United States for education and legislation. Yes, dead last. You people are not reading this wrong. Your eyes are not deceiving you. That is the truth. And if you don't like it, you can suck my cock. Oh, look out there in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's bubble dumb fucking. How about...